你啊！Told stories about a place like this, a protected land with people that never have to leave, that never have to change who they were. What reason do you have to reveal your secret to the world? I am not a woman who enjoys repeating herself. Who are you? I have many names. My people call me Akukunkan, but my enemies call me Namor. Get out of my door. Get out. Hey, I'm warning you, do not take another step toward me. See how they teach the children to treat their guests. Mm. going to give you two options. You can come to Wakanda, conscious or unconscious. You need to be conscious of the way that you look. Walking around here with that ash on your head. <laughs> oh, it's funny. No, it's not. Mm-hmm. I told you. You look good. Welcome back, everyone. It's Charlie. This will be my new Black Panther Wakanda Forever trailer video. There's a whole bunch of extended clips that they released, too, so we'll break it all down. There's just a whole bunch of Easter eggs, a whole bunch of stuff to talk about. If you're brand new to the channel, be sure to subscribe to get all the videos. Because the movie is coming out really soon, we're doing a giveaway for IMAX tickets. All you have to do to enter is be a subscriber and just post all your theories based on the footage in the video. I'm supposed to be seeing the movie in the next week, so if I get a chance to see it early, I will post a review video as soon as they let us do that. I know there are a bunch of questions about what's going on with the characters, like what is the future of Namor, what's the future of the new Black Panther, which seems like it's pretty much confirmed it's going to be Shuri now. There are a lot of questions about what's going on with Doctor Doom in the MCU because it seems like they're invoking a lot of Doom War elements from the comics, where he basically goes after Wakanda because of their vibranium. The report so far is that there is no actual Doctor Doom walking around in the movie, which I think is in line with our expectations. Like this is all about setting up Namor, his people, the Atlanteans in the MCU, which they're calling Talokan, and setting up the future of Shuri's Black Panther. So there's already just so much stuff going on in this, and they set up a bunch of other stuff as well as you would expect each Marvel movie, because there's a bunch of Black Panther spin-offs that they're going to be doing on Disney Plus and series, like a Wakanda Forever series. There's supposed to be an Okoye series just for her as well. So based on reports, it sounds like what they've done is that you have Doctor Doom in the background just kind of pulling strings, but nobody actually mentions the name Doctor Doom in the movie as far as we know. One of the big ideas in the movie is that Namor's people are threatened because you have this research team of regular humans looking for vibranium in underwater places, and that's how they find his city. Like the teams that are going after Vibranium in the underwater lab here, all the humans, seem like they're working for Lake Bell's character, who I believe is playing a version of Lucia Von Barda, one of Doctor Doom's chief lieutenants from Lopperia. And that's one of the only references we actually get to Doctor Doom legit in the movie, like reference to her character and her backstory. 
So it seems like he's trying to find Vibranium and using this team, but we don't actually find out that it's really him who's behind everything until a little bit later in the MCU in some future movie or Disney Plus series. They did just screen the movie and there was only one post credit scene, so no spoilers for what was actually in that, but typically Marvel movies have two post credit scenes, like there's a mid credit scene and an actual post credit scene. So a lot of people are wondering if they're going to add a second post credit scene after the movie comes out in theaters, and they didn't show it to critics or to people who saw it early because it's such a big spoiler. And that could be a Doctor Doom scene, but I'm not going to hold my breath on it. They did the same thing when the very first Avengers movie came out. Like they waited till like literally the last possible second when the movie came out in theaters to add that shawarma scene where they're all eating shawarma together. Reportedly, there'll be more stuff going on with Doctor Doom, more Easter eggs for him in the background when we get to the Ironheart series, because obviously Black Panther Wakanda Forever also setting up the Ironheart series. Mostly because the storyline in Ironheart is going to be all about magic versus technology, and that's core Doctor Doom territory, like he's a man of science and a man of magic. I know there's all kinds of questions too, because it seems like Sasha Baron Cohen is going to be playing a version of Mephisto during that series, so what they might do long term, like early theory, it'd be really cool if they did it, if they set up a Triumph and Torment arc for Doctor Doom in the MCU. If you don't know that story, that's the storyline where Doctor Strange and Doctor Doom team up to fight Mephisto in Hell to try and rescue Doctor Doom's mother. They saw the Mephisto memes, they're like, okay, you want a version of Mephisto, we'll give you a version of Mephisto. You just have to picture MCU Doctor Doom punching Sasha Baron Cohen in the face as Mephisto. You will never get this, you will never get this, la 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 la, here behind this cage, crazy crazy, everybody laugh. But talking about the new footage here, I know there's a question about these two Black Panther helmets. These are actually the previous helmets worn by T'Challa's Black Panther in what seems like one of his tombs or a monument to him. The one on the left was T'Challa's original Black Panther suit that he wore in Captain America Civil War, and the second one on the right is the one that Shuri gave him during the Black Panther movie that he wore all the way through Avengers Endgame. You get a whole bunch more footage of the characters, more footage of Riri Williams' Ironheart in her Mark I, and then her with Shuri building her Mark II. Obviously the Mark I looks much more like it's inspired by Iron Man's armor suits. Like she dumpster dives it together, it looks all cobbled together, the arc reactor is the same shape as Iron Man's arc reactors, but then when they're making the Mark II, like the Vibranium Ironheart suit, her arc reactor actually starts looking more like the actual heart, where she gets her name from, Ironheart. They have a couple clips of her testing out her arc reactor technology, which is meant to be a mirror for Iron Man testing out his arc reactor technology and just kind of derping all over the place, just hurting himself, trying to figure out the problems. It looks similar to Iron Man's arc reactors, but just a little bit different. Like, you get the idea. Like, they want it to be inspired by Iron Man, but it's not just meant to be a straight-up copy of Iron Man's technology. We get a much longer scene of Shuri in her new Black Panther suit, showing us what it looks like in an extended fight scene. Like, it almost seems like she's defying the laws of physics just because of the extra abilities that her suit has. And like you would expect, every time they upgrade an armor suit, it gets even more powers. I think a good comparison to make would be in the difference between Iron Man's armors later on through Avengers Infinity War and Avengers Endgame. So like T'Challa's last Black Panther suit did have nanites in it, it worked a little bit like Iron Man's suit with the way it formed around him. But it seems like what Shuri has done is taken that a step further and it's much closer to the difference between Iron Man's previous armors in his Infinity War and Endgame armor. Where her new Black Panther suit can literally make anything around her that she might need, any kind of weapons, any kind of technology. Like it forms the panther hand cannons that she used during the first Black Panther movie, but they just form out of nanites, so they go away when she doesn't need them. Then there's a clip of Namor actually flooding Wakanda during their big invasion, and obviously that's a big easter egg for the more recent Phoenix arc where a bunch of different characters got the powers of the Phoenix. Namor uses it to trump Black Panther and get a big one-up on him in their long-standing beef by completely flooding Wakanda, killing a whole bunch of people. The difference in this clip is that it seems like they use a lot of the rivers and the inlets because there's that other clip where Namor meets Shuri and Ramonda for the first time and they're like, how did you get in here? Where did you come from? Who are you? It seems like they're either hanging out on the riverfront or near a bay and he just got in using the river. He got in underwater under the shield at a weak point and because he's covered in vibranium. It sounds like this clip is happening earlier in the movie and he's approaching them because of what's happened with this research team coming upon his city. Like all these invaders are coming for us now and it has something to do with what you did revealing Wakanda to the world. Why did you do that? He also kind of explains his people's backstory during this too when he's talking to them. Wait a minute, you never had to hide or change who you were? I think part of the idea is that they'll have some sort of flashback or something during the movie to reference what actually happened to his people and why genetically they mutated, talking about mutants, going underwater. Because getting to the X-Men, the mutants of it all, Namor is going to be a mutant in the MCU. That's why he has the wings on his feet. That's why he can fly. 
And if it wasn't clear, all of his people's weapons, all the metal jewelry on him, all the metal pieces are all made of vibranium that just fell underwater. Like the whole idea in the comics is that vibranium exists other places on the planet, not just in Wakanda. It's just that the biggest concentration of it is in Wakanda. They have another scene of Okoye and Shuri coming to rescue Riri Williams and her just being freaked out and then Okoye making fun of Riri Williams. You can be conscious or unconscious. That's a bit of a reference to the Black Widow versus Dora Milaje scene in Captain America Civil War. Like the same energy where they have their own little ultimatum. You will move or be moved. You have another scene of Okoye getting pissed at Anika when the Dora Milaje are fighting off those invaders in the Vibranium Lab. Anika is from the comic. She's being played by Michaela Cole. She's also part of the Midnight Angels, which is like the special fighting force inside the Dora Milaje, like even more hardcore group within their group for trying out her energy daggers in their fight instead of using the vibranium spears, which Okoye yells about being their traditional weapons. And because she's in charge of the Dora Milaje, they're not going to be changing their traditions anytime soon under her watch. I think that's meant to flow with the whole storyline about the selection of who the next Black Panther winds up being because it's not immediately decided that it is going to be Shuri. Like that isn't the first thing that everybody goes to. There's a big question about who has the right to be the next Black Panther. And I think that becomes a larger discussion about what the traditions of the Black Panther character itself within Wakanda are. Like how do we choose the next Black Panther? What is the role of the next Black Panther? You also have to remember that Shuri is about the same age as Peter Parker in the MCU. So even though she seems a little bit older, she's actually still pretty young. If you spotted any other big Easter eggs in the trailer footage or the clips that I didn't talk about in the video or my previous Black Panther videos, just write them below in the comments. And like I said, if I do get a chance to see the movie early in the next week before it comes out, I will do a review early. Everyone click here for my full Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantum Mania trailer video and Kang Easter eggs and click here for my House of the Dragon alternate ending and deleted scenes video. Thank you so much for watching. Everyone stay safe and I'll see you guys in the next one.